can we turn our solo stove into a Kamado by adding a Dutch oven on top to act like a dome and cook some amazing pulled pork? We're gonna find out. Should work, I think. Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue. And if you're new to the channel, I got a solo stove earlier this year to replace a, a fire that was putting off too much smoke for the neighborhood. And so that drew me to looking at these smokeless fire pits and I landed on the solo stove. What I didn't expect is how capable of a cooker this would be. I've done a tomahawk ribeye on here, some chicken wings, and both have far exceeded my expectations of cooking over a fire pit. And so this smokeless design really amps up the quality of the food because you're not getting that dirty, struggling campfire taste. You're getting something more like an offset, nice, clean blue smoke all the time. And the results on the food are pretty remarkable. So that got me thinking, can we run this uh, like a hybrid between an offset and a Kamado and do a long, low, slow cook, something like a pulled pork, which is what I picked for today, and use a Dutch oven to serve as our dome? I don't know if it's gonna work, but I feel good about it. But before we find out the answer to that question, we need to get some heat going in our solo stove. So let me bring you nice and close, we'll fire it up. Okay, so I'm starting with the fire pit already cleaned out so we don't have any leftover ash potentially blocking some airflow. So now the game plan, I'm gonna try something I haven't done yet in my solo stove and I'm gonna put a little bit of Jealous Devil charcoal down on the bottom so we have a great coal bed. This is just gonna shorten the time of burning a bunch of wood down to establish a coal bed and then we'll get to throwing in some proper wood. So let's add some charcoal. So now that we've got just a little bit of charcoal in there, I got a little too aggressive on pouring out a full bag. I've just left a little mound of charcoal in the middle. I'm gonna add a split or two of wood and we'll fire this up. So we've got our charcoal in and our wood loaded up, keeping below that air line on the top. So now I'm gonna use my Grill Blazer grill gun and throw about 400,000 BTU at this so we can get our fire going quick. Let's fire it up. That looks good. So we've got our fire going. That's gonna continue to burn down, build some heat. While we get to work seasoning up our pork, we'll leave this on attendance so I don't have to worry about any sparks. I'm just gonna install the mesh fire guard. All right, our fire is really humming along right now, getting those logs burned down so we have a great coal bed. And the plan from here will be to just add a couple smoking wood chunks, I think, Based on my other videos, that is more than enough to sustain around that 270, 300 degrees Fahrenheit temperature that I'm hoping to achieve for today's attempted solo stove Kamado. So now we're gonna get to work on seasoning up our pork butt. Now this is uh, something I love to do is salt brine these ahead of time. And then if I'm gonna save it for later, freeze it. So this one has uh, come out of the freezer yesterday, completely on thawed. But before I did that, I gave it a nice even coating of diamond crystal kosher salt. One of my favorites for salt dry brining. Left that in the fridge overnight, vac sealed it up, froze it, and we are ready to go for today. So all I'm gonna do now, <laughs> not cover up everything, is add a little bit of a binder. You can use mustard, hot sauce, anything you like. I happen to love the hot sauce. So I'm gonna go with truff for a bit of a binder. And for rub, I just love the color of these charcoal based rubs. So I don't want a lot of salt. So there's one called um, Hardcore Carnivore Black, which I have, but it's really high on salt. So since we've already salt brined this, I find it a little bit too salty. So I'm gonna go with Fogo, which um, to me tastes really just like garlic, onion, and the activated charcoal uh, from coconut husks that make it this nice black flavor. So that's what I'm gonna hit this with. So we get the color, some of that garlic, and don't overdo our seasoning with salt. Let's get it all prepped up. So our pulled pork is all seasoned up and ready to go. So I think looking at the fire here, we probably have about 10, 15 minutes to wait just for those coals to die down a little bit more from inferno mode. So in hindsight, probably could have started that 15 minutes early. So the timing matched up perfectly when we got our pork roast ready, but it gives me an opportunity while we're in inferno mode to answer a question that comes up often, which is, am I worried about the heat of the solo stove or a Kamado in this table? And so to answer that, I ordered myself one of these Thermopen IRs. Now I already have a couple of Thermopens. It's the exact same as this one in terms of measuring temperature. This is the older uh, MK4, not the new 
one, but what the IR adds is an infrared temperature sensor. So it can let us know what the temperature is on the granite, on the cabinet, or a cooking surface if I want to know if my soapstone's up to temperature. So let me bring you nice and close. I'll show you what the temperatures are and why I am not at all worried about the solo stove in our cabinet. So the very first thing you can do if you don't have one of these, just, you know, obviously do the hand test, but based on how comfortable this is to have my hand underneath the solo stove, which is in full blown inferno mode, this is why this ring makes it safe to sit on a wood deck or a concrete surface. But the temperature of that surface right now is in the mid 60 degree Fahrenheit. If I check the cabinet beside here, I'll go upside down, you know, 82, check the other side, 85 degrees Fahrenheit and again all the way around this is just barely any warmth coming through so I am not worried about any da damage to the cabinets especially since this fire is going to be much much cooler for the duration of the day when we're doing our cook all right our bed of coals is looking perfect so let's get our mesh cover off add a little bit of wood and set up for our pulled pork rake our coals so we keep them nice and in the center so that way we don't lose our bed if they're all spread out everywhere we might lose some of our coal bed and so i want any wood that we add to catch right away so i'm just going to rake this into the center and then add a piece or two of our smoking wood so that looks good let's go ahead and add a piece or two of oak right into our coal bed we'll let those start to catch Next, we'll drop the raised bonfire. Uh, this is the bonfire model that I have. So that's the uh, raised cooking grid. And this just gives us a little bit more clearance from the heat. Like there is a lot of heat here. Uh, in the past with a few wood chips, or sorry, wood chunks, I've been able to hold about 270 degrees up at this higher level. So this is nice and stable. Let's get our cast iron cooking grid. So this just drops, it's got a little bit of feet on it. I don't know if you can quite see on the camera that helps it hold nice and stable onto the ring so it's self-centering you feel that lock right in position and just to like that in a minute or so we're already getting not even a minute a few seconds we're getting clean combustion on our smoking wood chunks and as we need to we'll just throw a few more in the side and i want to preheat our simulated ceramic dome so for now i'm just going to drop our dutch oven on and let it start to preheat and we'll get ready to put on our pulled pork in about a minute's time. All right, so a minute or two later, just this is already getting hot to the touch. So that is nice and pre-warm, ready to go. And so just the reason for doing that, since our pork is gonna be sitting up here, we're gonna try and manage our heat sources. So I've obviously got some conduction heat, which is going to be this cast iron surface getting hot. I'm going to have some convection heat. As you can see, those two pieces of wood chunks are now burning nice and clean, throwing great clean smoke and open flame. And then I'm gonna rely a little bit on this Dutch oven, which we're gonna put upside down over top of our roast for a bit of that radiant heat to try and cook it more evenly all the way throughout. So I've got our meter probe installed. We'll set that up to track today's cook. Let's just go ahead and drop on our pulled pork roast get that nice and situated windy today and then let's drop on our dome so now that we're all set i'm going to set up our meter probe to track today's cook so i can try and get a sense of when i need to add wood splits and how much i need to add and so in previous cooks i found adding one or two wood splits We'll shoot the temperature up and then about half an hour later it's on its way down so all we want to do is find a rhythm of how much wood we need to hold a temperature we're after and how often we want to go ahead and add those just looking at the flames coming from our two splits i might try one split next time and see again how much open flame we're getting and what temperature we're able to hold and that's going to be all part of the fun so now since we are cooking direct I normally wouldn't flip my pulled pork, but I will be keeping an eye on this to see if we want to get a little bit of that bark built up on all sides. And once we've got the bark where we want, we'll flip the Dutch oven, add a lid, maybe a little bit of braising liquid and finish this off until it pull, uh, it's fall apart tender. Easy for me to say. So I'll keep you posted as we go along with any big updates. All right, it's been about an hour. So I took the opportunity at the half hour mark 
to flip it just to make sure we're getting not anything overdone since we are cooking directly over the fire. And I was really happy with how that looked. So it's been another half hour and I think we are ready to add a little bit more wood and take another peek at our pulled pork to see if we want to flip it now to its side. Let's come nice and close and check it out. All right, let's take a peek. Oh, that looks promising. Let's just check now the bottom. This, this side was our original side. That was about half an hour. Bottom sides now had half an hour. That's looking good. So let's give this a chance now to render this fat cap a little bit. Flip it on its side here. And I'm gonna go for two more oak smoking chunks. Perfect, let that keep cooking. All right, we are about three hours into our smoked pulled pork on the solo stove and it's looking remarkably good and smelling even better. So if nothing else, we are gonna have those two things going for us. But now I think our bark is fully formed on all sides and I want to start moving from bark and some of that crisp and char uh, texture into our nice tender and juicy pulled pork. So the game plan now is I'm gonna get the lid for our Dutch oven. This is a seven quart size. I have a five quart size. And the seven quart size is a seven quart large Dutch oven. And then I'm just gonna add some apple cider vinegar, seal that up and let it continue to tenderize on our solo stove, acting like a Kamado today. All right, so using my high heat gloves, I'm just gonna lift this off. By the way, I was able to tell using my Thermapen IR that our grate temperature is running around 260 degrees and our Dutch oven is holding about 160 degrees. So that radiant heat is definitely helping uh, radiate some of that heat that we're capturing back into the top of our pulled pork, which you can see here is looking awesome. Actually even starting to get a little bit of jiggle. That looks good. So let's get that into our Dutch oven. Add a little apple cider vinegar into our pot. Just about a half inch or so should be great. Let's cover that back up. And I think our pulled pork has reached the finish line. And so since I was checking the temperatures occasionally throughout the cook, I've started adding less and less wood. So we are nearly out. There's just a small little flame still tickering, flickering along in the bottom of our solo stove. So let me bring it nice and close. We'll check the temperature. And if that's the case, I am going to let this die out and just let this serve as our resting station. So there'll still be some residual heat, but cooler than continuing to cook it. And that will be our holding plan for about an hour or so rest before we shred this up and get into our taste test. So that is pretty tender, reading 195, 194, 198. But again, this is feeling incredibly tender. So I think I'm gonna call that done. So let's let this uh, close it back up. And the game plan is just to let that rest until we shred it. Actually, scratch that. A minute after I turned off the camera, I noticed a few spots still felt a little bit tougher than I was hoping for. So what I did is I just removed the cast iron cook grid and the large seven quart Dutch oven happens to sit beautifully, almost perfect in the cooking system for the bonfire. And so that's allowed me just to drop it a little bit closer to heat. And I added one more wood chunk just to give that a touch more time. So like before, I'll rejoin you when we are ready and this is rested for our taste test. All right, our rest is complete. Let's shred this up and get into our taste test. Well, I hope this tastes half as good as it looks and it shreds. The bone, as you can see, just came out perfectly clean, which is the telltale sign of well done pork. I'll put the details down below for the sauce. This is one I've shared before. It's one of our favorite for pulled pork, but without further ado, let's dig in, see how it tastes. Got a couple of pieces here, mixed a little bit of sauce in while we were shredding. Let's try it out. Pulled pork is one of those things that's nearly impossible to mess up. And this is nowhere close to a fail. This is really, really good. And so what are we tasting? We're getting a little bit of that, you know, enhanced flavor you get from a salt brine. There's a big difference when you salt brine versus non-salt brine. That's coming through. You're tasting more of the pork getting a little bit of that vinegar from when we braised it as well as our sauces. It's a vinegar based sauce as well. And then our rub that Fogo, just a little bit of that 
kind of crust and garlic, uh, depending on the pieces that you get, a little bit of that crust is really nice texture and it just kind of melts away in your mouth. So this is an absolute win. Our total cook time was just over four, four and a half hours. And then we've rested for about an hour and I would, I'm really shocked again at how well this worked. Now, is it as easy to maintain those temperatures as a Kamado? Absolutely. No way you're signing up to be adding wood about every 30 minutes throughout the day. You can turn out a pretty stunning pulled pork. Well, color me impressed, but that's it for today. I'm going to sign off. So until next time, I'm James from Spoken Dad Barbecue signing off. And if you like this video, please let YouTube know by smashing that thumbs up button and let me know by hitting subscribe to catch future videos. We'll see you then.